everyone and welcome to another episode of the Simple Knit Podcast. My name is Eleanor. You can find me on Instagram as Simple Knit Co and here on YouTube where I talk to you about all the things that I have been making recently, mostly knitting. I hope you're all well. If this is your first time checking out the podcast, welcome along. It's lovely to meet you and big hello and welcome back to all of my returning viewers. It's always so nice to see you every episode and have a chat about what we're all making. Um, it was accidentally of like two months since I've last uploaded an episode. There was no real reason for that. Just been um, enjoying the summer over here in Australia where I'm from and where I live. Um, where we are in the world compared to a lot of other places due to the pandemic, we are having a lot of, we have a lot more freedom um, than a lot of other places in the world. We're very lucky that we have very little COVID in Australia. So, um, we, our lives, I mean, they're not back to normal or pre-COVID conditions, but we are able to go out, enjoy a lot of activities, see friends and family and all of that. So um, we're very fortunate. Um, and now I've just been kind of enjoying uh, my summer, but I felt like coming back today and sitting down and just filming a video to show you all the things that I've been working on um, since we last spoke. There won't be very much to see because that's kind of the other flip side to I've been just doing lots of non-nitty activities and it's also the summer so even today it's quite overcast but it is humid and it is hot and I have all my windows in this room shut because the kids next door are playing outside which is very cute but you know what kids are like so it's a if I get a bit sweaty um, I apologize but that's just a occupational hazard of living in the tropics so pour yourself a drink I've got a little coffee here which probably isn't helping with my uh, sweat quota but I will um let's chat let's chat some making so the first thing I have to talk about isn't even really it's not really a making thing it's just a mending thing so this uh black jumpsuit that I'm wearing today it's my absolute favorite it's just a ready to wear black linen blend jumpsuit it's one of my absolute favorite pieces in my wardrobe I wear it all the time or I should say I wore it all the time um until one of the shoulder straps broke. I remember when it broke, I remember where I was when I broke it. It was, I was on holidays in, I was in Europe in August of 2019 and the strap broke and I mean, it is what it is. And I looked at it, I thought, oh, that's a really easy fix. It'll take me five minutes. So it sat on, uh, in a little folded up nice and neatly beside my sewing machine until last month. I finally took the, all of five minutes that it took to repair as I just had to shove the strap back in the hole and stitch it up very technical uh, but as I said it took five minutes I don't know why I put off doing it for so long but I'm so glad I did because I really really love this jumpsuit it's really just comfy and easy to wear so uh, my advice is just to pull your finger out and do that mending job that you've been meaning to do for ages and ages and ages um, because it won't take very long and you'll be really grateful that you did it when you can wear whatever it is again. I'm the worst at just procrastinating for a mil- I can procrastinate for the rest of my life on <laughs> really simple tasks. So I'm very, very proud of myself for finally just stitching. And because it's black, black thread on black, like I didn't even have to be tidy or sensible, just had to be secure. So um, I managed to do it pretty smoothly, like you can't really can't even tell that it's been repaired, which is, which is the goal. So let's get on to some knitting that I've been doing. The first thing I want to show you is kind of seasonally appropriate. It's a little Valentine's Day mini skein kit that I got from Danny of Half Baked Hand Dyed. Let me see if I can, came in this little gift box, which is just, oh, glare, so cute. So it is these, um, you get eight little six gram micro skeins of Valentine's themed yarn. So there's four self-striping colors, if you can see those, super cute. And then four um, solid colors. I haven't used these four yet. So that this is the size that the skeins ooh, are when you receive them. This is not going well. <laughs> this is not going well at all. There we go. Um, that's just kind of the size they are when you receive them. So they're little six gram micro skeins. Um, Danny of Half Baked Hand Dyed, as I said, she um, is a Melbourne-based indie dyer. 
Um, I think probably most known, what I know her most for is her self-striping colorways. So she is has dyed up these little micro skeins that she has designed to make these little um, little love hearts that she's got a free pattern on Ravelry for these little hearts that I will link down below. But um, the micro skeins are specifically designed to make these adorable little hearts. I have three completed ones that do not have their ends woven in because what you do is you make them and then you can stuff them and use them as like little gifts or to make little garlands. Um, but I don't have any stuffing to stuff with which to stuff them. How many times can you say that in one sentence? So I've just been working on them. So there's this really cute one that's like a gray and pink, which is super pretty. Uh, this one, which is a uh, beautiful pink and red, which is super Valentine's-y and nice. Um, and it's a really, really simple little pattern. This one is a four striper. So you've got all four of the colors. And then this one that I'm working on at the moment, I'm just about to start the two little peaks at the top of the heart is um, the pink and white stripes. And actually, unexpectedly, I think this uh, these colors have been my favorite so far. It kind of just looks like strawberries and cream. I think it's so cute. So yeah, as I said, Danny's written a free little heart pattern. You don't need to buy a kit to get it. It's just up on Ravelry and any fingering, fingering weight scraps you can use. Um, I found for me, it takes about um, three grams of a fingering weight yarn. Um, so I could easily, like looking at what I've done and how much I've left, I could easily get two hearts out of each little micro skein. Um, I'm making them on a 2.75 millimeter needle. Um, the pattern's written for a 2.5, but I couldn't find my 2.5 millimeter needles um, it, for Magic Loop. Like you'd need to knit these on Magic Loop. I could have used, I did have my um, nine inch circular uh, 2.5, but I now am remembering um, my 2.5 millimeter needle is in a project that I would have to find and pull out. So I just, I'm normally a tight knitter, particularly on fiddly little projects like this. So I figured uh, my 2.75 would be fine, and it was. And I think even going up a needle size, my gauge is still a little tighter than Danny's. Um, she, in the pattern pictures and in the pattern description, she has dyed these micro skeins. So um, it's supposed to be you get four stripes in each heart. And as you can see, I use five stripes. Um, I could probably get, get it done in four. No, I would still dip into the fifth. So I kind of use about five, five um, stripes completely to make each little heart, which I think is they're just so cute and they just have been so fun to make. Sometimes these little tiny, very satisfying projects it takes me about half an hour probably to finish it off. Um, but I've been having a lot of fun this weekend just making these little hearts. And I do enjoy kind of heart motifs year round. It's not just a seasonal thing for me. So I think when I have made however many I decide to make, I will put them on a little garland and hang them up somewhere in my house because I think they're really really cute and this is just a really one of those things that was just so cute and fun to get in the post as well so that is my little slightly seasonal project I'm not sure if Valentine's Day counts as enough of a holiday to be seasonal but do enjoy it do enjoy a bit of love chat and I do enjoy any excuse to tell every single person in my life how much I love them <laughs> so that is what I've been recently working on. I have two other big works in progress that um, returning viewers will recall. So I will just share with you where I'm up to on those. And I do actually have, um, I usually don't write notes. I usually just put a camera on and talk when I record these. But actually it's been so long I actually wrote down what I have to talk about. So feeling very, very organized and virtuous today. And apparently everyone on my street is deciding to just throw throw metal around but that's fine I'm sure it won't be that loud so the first project long longish term project that I have to show you is this one here it is my ripple crop top by Jessie Mae Martinson I've been working on this for like seven million years it feels like it is a really really cute super super popular pattern um, it's really lovely. It's just like a three by three rib, short sleeved, 
slightly cropped top and I'm pretty sure I'm finally, finally at the point where I split for the front and back of the top. Um, as I said, I feel like I've been working on this for 700 years. I normally don't like making fingering weight garments because they take forever. And at the size I'm knitting, I'm pretty sure I'm knitting the size large in this pattern. I have like around 300 stitches on the needle. So yeah, this has kind of taken over because it's quite a small, even though it's a garment, it's quite small and compact. This has taken over kind of as my handbag knitting. And finally, now that we're actually able to go out and do things and be out and about, I'm actually getting quite a bit more done on this. So when I picked it back up, I think in December, I was at this stitch marker. So I have, I have made a lot of progress. That's very satisfying to see. I have made quite a lot of progress. So I'm almost at the part where you split for the front and back and they, I'm not, I don't, I think there might be little sleeves, but they're really short. So they won't take very long at all compared to the hours of my life that have gone into this top. It's going to be so cute when it's done. I love the color, this really pretty mauvey pink. Um, but oh my gosh, I just want this to be over. <laughs> if I never knit three by three rib again, it will be too soon. So the yarn that I'm using is, um, it's Cartier, ooh, Cartier Polynesia. I think the colorway is called mauve. It's, this yarn is advertised as a DK, DK weight yarn, but that's a, that's a flat out lie. So I'm not sure if you can see there, it is, it's kind of a cotton acrylic blend, so it has a really nice sheen to it, but it's kind of this thick and thin texture, so it has like these nubs of like unspun cotton, which work up really nicely. As you can see, it just gives it that kind of a really nice texture. Um, it does mean it's a little slippy and not like the most fun to work with, and it is actually really uh, sheddy. Cause I wear a lot of black. I just look very fuzzy a lot of the time when I'm working on this. I have a lint roller hanging by my door for a reason. Um, but it is, it's a really lovely yarn. The drape of it's really pretty. I think it's going to be really, really lovely to wear. And as I said, it has a really nice shine to it, but, um, I would not, knitting this at a DK weight gauge would be incredibly, um, sheer. If that's what you're going for, go ahead. But I definitely think it looks much better knit at a fingering weight gauge. I'm doing 3.5 millimeter needles, which I believe is the recommended needle size. And yeah, I just want this to be over. Um, hopefully it means I will feel really satisfied and appreciate the labor that I've gone to, um, to make this. When I pull it out, my mom's like, oh, are you still working on that? It's been that long. Normally my mum makes stuff as well, so she normally doesn't comment things like that because she knows how long it takes. But she's like, oh, you mustn't work on that very often. I feel like I've been working on it my entire life. But it's going to be so cute when it's done and I'm going to love it. And I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of it. I already in my head have so many outfits that I could wear this with. So based on what I already have in my wardrobe. So give me strength. I will get this stupid top done this stupid adorable top. So that is one work in progress that I have on the go. The other one is so nearly finished and I'm so thrilled. Um, I won't be able to wear it for like 700 years. Sometimes even on a day like today, sometimes even touching the wool is um, very sweaty, but I am so stoked with the progress that I have made on my Deliciosa jumper. So I'm just gonna hold it up and not say anything for a little bit. Ooh. It's just so gorgeous. I love it so much. So this is the Deliciosa jumper by the amazing Nora Garn, one of my favorite knitwear designers. She's kind of a titan of the industry, isn't she? And just like the queen of cables. Oh, there you go. So it's this amazing jumper with this leaf motif that's done with cables and twisted stitches and the background here of twisted red. So I'm knitting the third size of um, in the pattern and there are options for either a cropped or standard length and I'm doing the cropped length. I think if I just hop up a tiny bit, it'll look really cute over this jumpsuit. 
because it kind of ends just right at the peak of my hip bones. So it'd be really cute over skirts, high-waisted jeans, um, over jumpsuits. Um, or even with a longer top underneath it. I think that would kind of, that slightly layered look, I really like. Um, so I, yeah, I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled. The front and back body pieces have been blocked already because I just couldn't help myself. Um, and then I've done the collar. I've done the first sleeve. And I'm currently working on the second sleeve. I'm using the recommended needle size, I believe. So which is, I think... It's a 4.5, isn't it? Yes, it is. A 4.5 millimeter needle. Um, and I'm working with this Knit Picks Wool of the Andes yarn in the Everglade Heather. Yep, Everglade Heather colorway. Oh, boop. Um, but I, I believe I've said this in the last episode, but it's been so long, I don't expect anyone to remember. Um, but I did buy this to make a different jumper like two years ago. I just never got around to making it. And then when I saw this pattern, it was love at first sight. You can probably tell why there's a giant Monstera Deliciosa right there that's actually growing a new leaf at the moment that I'm really excited about. Um, but yeah, I have, I'm just in love with this jumper. Um, so it's a it's a pattern for Brooklyn Tweed. Um, so knitting the body, it wasn't it's not a difficult knit I would say, but I wouldn't recommend it if you haven't knit a garment before or if you haven't done a lot of cable knitting um, because the motif is only charted, it's not written, and it's a like it's a fifty stitch motif, so it's quite a long motif, and. It's not like traditional cable knitting where you kind of get into a rhythm because you're kind of drawing and like making pictures with cables. It doesn't have that kind of intuitive, you kind of have to be kind of a little bit glued to the chart while I found I had to be at least glued to the chart while I was working on it. Um, but it's so beautiful and there are so many pretty versions that other people have made using other colors. There's like a really beautiful dark brown one. Um, people have done like really beautiful autumnal colors like oranges and reds and yellows that look really, really like autumny and festive. But this beautiful jungle green um, is very much up my street. So I didn't, I haven't made too many modifications um, making this jumper. Um, the shoulder seams, um, I normally hate doing shoulder seams so I will most of the time do a not bind off the stitches and do a three needle bind off um, but because the um, way the shoulder decreases were there's a, you still have a lot of stitches on the needle so working out how to do the short rows to leave the stitches live was just kind of more brain power than I was willing to spend at the time when I was doing it so I did have to seam the shoulders <laughs> um, and I did it. I mean, I actually went and as recommended in the pattern, because the pattern is always right, <laughs> as recommended in the pattern, I went to, um, the Brooklyn Tweed has a really great like seaming 101 page and they're using the top to top um, seaming instructions and it has some really helpful diagrams. I just did that and after trying to like crochet seam and do a couple of other things and making an absolute dog's breakfast out of it, I just did what the pattern said and it worked really well. So the only other modification that I did with the construction was with the sleeve construction. So what you're supposed to do is you have your front and back pieces, you, you seam the shoulders and then you're supposed to just go and measure down the body, the front and the back to work out where the sleeve starts and ends um, without doing the side seam first. And then you pick up the stitches and then you knit the sleeve flat and then you just do one big seam from cuff to cuff. Um, nah, I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> I was not going to knit the sleeves flat. Um, this is like the one part, they're just plain stockinette sleeves. So I was like, this is the one part of this pattern that's going to be chill. So I, um, I did what it said at the start. I measured on the front and back how, whatever distance it said, um, from the shoulder seam the sleeves needed to be and I popped in a stitch marker. I then just mat mattress stitched up the sides and I did really good mattress stitch. Normally I hate doing mattress stitch but like you can't even see my seams and on the inside they're really neat too. 
I don't know if you can see that, but that's like the best mattress stitch I've ever done. I'm so proud of myself. Um, but anyway, so I did that. I did the um, mattress stitch up the side and then I just picked up and I'm knitting the sleeve in the round. So as you can see, I'm using my little um, 12 inch circular needles and I'm able to use these 12 inch needles all the way down. I then go down to the ribbing size, which is a 3.75 millimeter needle. I can just, as you can see, they're quite little cuffs. I can just about get the cuff done um, on the 12 inch circular, but it is a little bit tedious because you do, there aren't all that many stitches on the needle. So this is kind of probably the smallest number of stitches I could possibly do on a 12, point, a 12 inch circular, I should say. Um, it would be maybe easier if I would just do a magic loop, but I don't know. I don't really, I'm not really bothered. Um, and I did have to do one extra decrease to get this to be a multiple of four to do um, the ribbing around the cuff because I did have an extra two stitches because I didn't have a seam that I was going to have to account for on the sleeve. So, but that's very easy to take care of. I think from reading people's project pages, I think quite a lot of people um, did this mod for working this jumper just because, as I said, the stockinette sleeves are the only chill bit of the pattern. So if you can avoid purling and back and forthing and this giant seam, I think my sleeve is actually a centimeter or two longer than the pattern. Ooh. But I wanted a really nice long sleeve and they will grow a little bit when I block the whole thing together. Um, but I'm just absolutely thrilled. As I say, not really the ideal climate to have um, something this woolly. I mean, it's going to be winter eventually. I can't even imagine not being sweaty at this point, but it will happen. So I cannot wait until that day um, when I can wear this amazing jumper. I'm about halfway done with this sleeve, so I should be able to get that done pretty soon um, if I focus and get moving. It's kind of big enough now that I don't have to have it on my person. I can work on it with it kind of sitting beside me. Um, so if I'm sitting down, the jumper can just be in a pile beside me. I don't have to have the wool on my person, which makes it much easier to work on in the summer. But that is kind of everything that I have been, everything I've been knitting, everything I've been working on lately. As you can see, not really much. It's been a fun summer. So I've had other things, other things to do <laughs> other than knitting. And that, I mean, that happens with life, with any hobby. You kind of dip in and out of it, but it's always fun. It's always great at the end of the day just to pull up a chair even for 15 minutes and uh, run off a couple stitches. I do have some books to talk to you about though. The first one though, I'm crazy excited about. It came a couple of weeks ago and I'm absolutely thrilled. So it's the new Nora Garn book. So that's the designer of my um, Deliciosa jumper. It's called this Twisted Stitch Source Book. Um, so it's basically a stitch dictionary of all these amazing stitches that you can do with twisted stitches. And then she has a whole ton of patterns. I love them all. I think they're all absolutely stunning. Um, but let me just pull up a couple. This is called the, how am I going to show this? Um, the Extreme Yoke Pullover. Is there a page away I can show this without showing you the entire pattern? There we go. Oh, it's a bit glary. It's this gorgeous, like, twisted stitch yoke jumper. So pretty. Every all I think there's about 12 patterns in this book, um, which I reckon was worth buying it for alone. This one is called the Basic Pullover, and it uses the Open Pyramid Stitch. Oh, so pretty. So, so many pretty patterns. Um, highly recommend if you like like cables, that kind of style of knitting, even this cardigan is gorgeous. Um, and there's just a whole bunch of really inspiring different, um, stitch patterns and in the patterns in the book as well, it gives you tips of how to substitute one motif for another. So you can really personalize them, but yeah, it's just, I've had a very fun, how much, see how much of a knitting nerd you are. I've had a few very fun evenings just reading through and looking at all of the beautiful stitches in, um, in this book and admiring all the gorgeous patterns. So highly recommend if you like a good knitting book, this is a, 
a new one and it's really fun um I think literally the day it arrived I was just like well cancel my plans this is my weekend now and it was really really great and it has a lot of really great design tips so if you like designing patterns as well there'd be a lot of um really helpful stuff. Nora's incredibly generous with her wisdom and knowledge about designing patterns as well. So that is all of the knitting stuff. I do have a couple, I have read quite a few books over this summer, but I have just a couple that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, one is one that I've read recently and one is one that I've reread recently, but they're both, I had a really great time reading both of them. So let's go with the new read first. So this is Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshni. Um, it was, was it longlisted or shortlisted? It was only longlisted for the booker. Um, and it is really, really good. So it is set in India and it's just, it's just about a tumultuous mother daughter relationship really. So it's from the perspective of the daughter and her mother is, um, beginning to show signs of dementia and it kind of moves back and forward in time and looks at, their relationship and the protagonist's childhood and the thing I really loved about this um because it is a, like a first person narrated story it's in the first person yes it is in the first person <laughs> just had to check but and it's very like interior like a lot of interiority from the narrator but she's very withholding so you're kind of you're getting the story from her perspective but she kind of will just drop these bombshells of disclosure and then back away from them this is really interesting and a really unique narratorial writing style that i thought was really really brilliant and would not be easy to do so very very skillful writing from avni doshni um, and highly, highly recommend. And the reread that I have is one of my all-time favorite books from one of my all-time favorite authors. I read it again and it's still so freaking good. Hot Milk by Deborah Levy. I love Deborah Levy. Levy? Levy? I don't know. Deb? <laughs> I love, I've loved everything of hers I've read. I've read most of her books at this point. And um, there's a couple of her early, earlier novels I haven't read, but Hot Milk is still definitely my favorite. It's so good. It's the best book to read in the summer. And uh, similar to Burnt Sugar, it's about a very dysfunctional mother-daughter relationship. So uh, daughter, whose life is kind of not real. She's in her mid twenties and life kind of isn't really going swimmingly for her, but her mum has some health concerns. And so there's this doctor in Greece that thinks that he can has a clinic that can help her and so they go over to Greece to uh, seek this treatment and she has a very like a great summer holiday experience but it's really just like looking at their relationship and um, this, the, um, this daughter's sense of self um, and it's kind of based on like there's a lot to do with like the Medusa myth in this that I kind of don't know enough about to really say anything intelligent about. But you know when you read something and you know that there's good stuff going on and you're like, oh, one day I'm going to know enough to get it. Um, but not in a way that's inaccessible and makes you feel stupid or anything. I hate it when books do that. Um, but it's really great and you kind of get something fresh out of it every time you read it. It's kind of, it's a very like sensual, sweaty, summery book. So. It would be a great, it's not like a light read, but it, as you can see, it's tiny. I think I reread it in one afternoon. Um, but would be a really great, like, summer holiday on the beach kind of read. Or if you're just into something a little bit atmospheric, a bit of escapism for an afternoon. This is very good. Wow, that wind is uh, not joking around with the screen on my door. <laughs> so, two book recommendations. Um, some knits. I think that's just about everything. I think I managed to do that without being too weird um, and out of practice today. So, how are you guys? Uh, what have you been working on? How has the first few months of the year been for you? Um, how are you coping in your part of the world? I'd love to hear. So please feel free, leave a comment below. Let me know what's going on for you. Um, it's always kind of that's the most fun part of this whole recording yourself in your house business is getting to hear from other people and connect with people. That's the most fun part about having a podcast. So please 
leave a comment below let me know how you're going let me know what you're working on I hope you're all keeping safe and well and I promise it'll be not quite so long between drinks this time but have a great rest of your day and I will catch you next time bye